Good afternoon, thank you for coming. Uh, today, the Justice Department has filed suit against the state of Texas for violating Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. As the Supreme Court has observed, a core principle of our democracy is that, quote, voters should choose the representatives, not the other way around, close quote. Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act requires that state voting laws, including laws that draw electoral maps, provide eligible voters with an equal opportunity to participate in the democratic process and elect representatives of their choosing. The complaint we filed today alleges that Texas has violated Section 2 by creating redistricting plans that deny or abridge the rights of Latino and black voters to vote on account of their race, color, or membership in a language minority group. In a moment, Associate Attorney General Gupta will describe our complaint in more detail. As many of you know, in 2013, the Supreme Court effectively eliminated the preclearance provisions of the Voting Rights Act, which had been the department's best tool for protecting voting rights. Earlier this year, I noted that this redistricting cycle would be the first to proceed since 1960 without the protection of preclearance. But I also said that the department would use all available authorities and resources to continue protecting the right to vote. In September, the department published guidance based on decades of precedent, explaining that Section 2 prohibits vote dilution. Vote dilution occurs when an electoral practice minimizes or cancels out the voting strength of members of a racial group or language minority group. When we issued that guidance, I noted that discriminatory redistricting schemes are illegal and that the department would assess jurisdictions' compliance with those laws during this redistricting cycle. The department's career voting law experts have assessed Texas's new redistricting plans and determined that they include districts that violate the Voting Rights Act. Last month, we filed a separate lawsuit against the state of Texas alleging that Texas Senate Bill 1 improperly restricts the assistance voters who have a disability or who are unable to read or write can receive in the voting booth. Last week, we filed a statement of interest in Arizona litigation to explain that private plaintiffs had plausibly alleged that certain new voting laws in that state were passed with a discriminatory purpose. We also filed a statement of interest in Florida litigation explaining, among other things, that private parties can bring claims to enforce the Voting Rights Act. In all of these matters, we have carefully assessed the facts and the law before taking action. I am grateful to the dedicated staff of the voting section for their work today and every day to protect the right of all eligible citizens to vote. Before I conclude, I want to again urge Congress to restore the Justice Department's preclearance authority. Were that preclearance tool still in place, we would likely not be here today announcing this complaint. I will now turn the podium over to Associate Attorney General Gupta. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney General Garland. The right to vote is foundational to our democracy, and the Justice Department is charged with protecting that right. Today, we are filing suit against the state of Texas based on our determination that Texas's 2021 redistricting plans violate Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. The department reached that determination after a careful assessment of the facts and the law. I want to thank the career staff of the Civil Rights Division's voting section for their tremendous efforts on this investigation. Our complaint today alleges that the redistricting plans approved by the Texas State Legislature and signed into law by the governor will deny black and Latino voters an equal opportunity to participate in the voting process and to elect representatives of their choice in violation of the Voting Rights Act. Our complaint also alleges that several of those districts were drawn with discriminatory intent. Texas's 2021 redistricting plans were enacted through a rushed process with minimal opportunity for public comment, without any expert testimony, and with an overall disregard for the massive minority population growth in Texas over the last decade. Texas's population grew by 4 million people from 2010 to 2020, and 95% of that growth came from minority populations. 
Despite the significant increase in the number and proportion of eligible Latino and black voters in Texas, the newly enacted redistricting plans will not allow minority voters an equal opportunity to elect representatives of their choice. Instead, our investigation determined that Texas's redistricting plans will dilute the increased minority voting strength that should have developed from these significant demographic shifts. For example, Texas will gain two new congressional seats because of its population growth, almost all of which is due to growth in the state's minority population. However, Texas has designed both of those new seats to have white voting majorities. The congressional plan also deliberately reconfigured a West Texas district to eliminate the opportunity for Latino voters to elect a representative of their choice. This is the third time in three decades where Texas has eliminated a Latino electoral opportunity in this same district, despite previous court determinations that this violates the law. And the state house plan eliminated Latino electoral opportunities by manipulating or eliminating districts where Latino communities previously had elected their preferred candidates. These redistricting plans will diminish the opportunities for Latino and black voters in Texas to elect their preferred representatives. And that is prohibited by federal law. The complaint asks the court to prohibit Texas from conducting elections under the challenge plans and asks the court to devise, to order Texas to devise and implement new redistricting plans that comply with section two of the Voting Rights Act. The complaint also asks the court to establish interim plans pending a lawful state redistricting. This is not the first time Texas has acted to minimize the voting rights of its minority citizens. Decade after decade, courts have found that Texas has enacted redistricting plans that deliberately dilute the voting strength of Latino and black voters and that violate the Voting Rights Act. The Attorney General has made clear that the Justice Department will not stand idly by in the face of unlawful attempts to restrict access to the ballot. Today's filing demonstrates that commitment to this charge. The Justice Department stands ready to protect the constitutionally guaranteed voting rights of Americans in Texas and indeed throughout the country. Thank you. Attorney General Garland, we've learned that you're going to meet later on today with Emmett Till's family to discuss the final investigative report. What will you tell them? So I can confirm that uh, Assistant Attorney General Clark is in Chicago now meeting with the family and we'll have more to say this afternoon after the meeting. Mr. Attorney General, without Section 5, what challenge do you face in showing that these changes are intended to affect minority turnout rather than just to achieve partisan advantage? Look, without Section 5, there are two problems. One, it means that we don't get a chance to look at these things before they go into effect. Um, which is a very significant um, uh, aspect of our tools and instead requires that we challenge every case individually. Uh, and second, it flips the burden of proof. So the, those are the two most significant changes uh, caused by the Shelby County case. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, I wanted to ask you about uh, Special Counsel John Durham's investigation. In the last few weeks, there have been two or months have been two indictments that his office has released. Do those indictments go through the same review and approval process here in the Justice Department as uh, ordinary indictments? So the regulations regarding special counsel are pretty clear about uh, what um, uh, Mr. Durham does, and I don't want to uh, say anything more uh, beyond what's in the regulations, but we are following the regulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. country to see this rise in crime. Uh, your home st city of Chicago, more than a thousand people killed. What's your reaction? What, what's, what's the plan? Well, it's a ter it is a terrible thing and it's uh, a rise in crime began last year and has continued into this year. As you no doubt know, I visited my uh, home city of Chicago when we established a gun violence trafficking task force there and I met with the chief of police. I met with all of the federal law enforcement and I met with uh, this uh, state and local uh, law enforcement. In la last May uh, of this year, we announced an anti-violent crime initiative. 
which focuses very much on establishing these kind of joint task forces with state and local um, um, police uh, agencies uh, combined with all of our federal law enforcement so that all the tools available to the department um, are used to help our state and local uh, partners. Um, we also have uh, reinvigorated the um, Safe Street Task Forces, which have uh, been in, in effect for uh, quite some time, uh, all of, of which is to say that uh, this bothers me very much and uh, the violent crime increase is one that we must address and that we are putting all of our uh, resources towards. 